Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elias from the Department of Education, Hazara University, Mansehra. This presentation is aimed at discussing the general process of research in social sciences. This particular topic is aimed at junior researchers and especially student researchers um, who are actually starting or beginning the process of research for their research studies for the research degrees. So let us begin with how we actually go through the general process of research in social sciences. Generally, um, the research process begins with the research problem identification. And then Generally, the, the next step is the research questions or research objective formulation. Um, this leads to review of uh, related literature or the available or a study of the available literature related to the question or research topic that we are uh, that we uh, that we want to explore. Um, this research review actually leads to the refinement of research questions or research objectives. This is followed by research design formulation and then the implementation of research design including data collection and data analysis and then ultimately to findings and conclusions and report writing. So as you can see it's a kind of cyclic process um, that is involved over there and um, it, it has some logical sequence. Um, the whole process actually revolves around a logical sequence. So now we will discuss these um, various steps one by one and so let's begin with research problem identification. What happens during this stage of the research process? So um, as one can, one can actually think so, um, res this is one of the most crucial steps in the research process because generally research revolves around um, finding answers to or exploring a research problem. And so that's why uh, problem identification is an is a crucial step. Um, at this stage we need to ask the, the very basic question and that question is what is it that you want to explore? Um, then the what of the research problem might have uh, might the, the basis of this might be found in your personal experiences um, as a student uh, and later on as a research student or as a professional then professional, um, uh, there, there might be a professional rationale uh, or professional reasons for you to explore this particular research problem. And there might be academic rationale. That actually means that you have studied around this particular research problem that you are exploring in a more academic uh, sense. And this will actually come through um, initial reading around the, the problem that you, uh, that you want to explore. So you might have some initial reading. You might have some previous experiences um, related to the issue that you are thinking for in exploring um, in, your, um, in your research thesis. And there might be some certain discussions among um, your friends or your colleagues. So you might have discussed the issue um, or the question on your mind or the issue on your mind might have come out of some discussions that might have um, uh, happened in your personal or professional lives. And so here is a simple example. For example, reflection, meaning and implementation. Reflection or reflective practice is actually the issue um, or the research topic that I explored for my PhD thesis. So if 
let's say you are interested in exploring the meaning of reflection and how reflection is implemented in educational context. This could be an example of a research problem. You could have other examples of research problems um, related to your own field of and your own area uh, of interest. It could be teacher education. It could it could be um, uh, it it could be a topic related to other areas of uh, professional or academic life, such as issues related to school, issue, issues related to the teaching learning process, or other similar issues. Then um, in here, in terms of reflection, um, I actually studied this issue because a variety of definitions and implementation practices have been associated with this. And so I was interested in knowing how has it been defined in particular context and how what implementation practices are actually involved in terms of the practical impl implementation of reflection in teacher education programs. The second step then is the formulation of research questions. So what are the research questions on your mind? What aspects of the research problem are being explored? This is something that the researcher needs to think about. That actually means turning the problem or issue into broader questions. For example, in this case, we, were, we, we actually were thinking about exploring the meaning and implementational strategies of reflection as an educational concept. So here the question could be, what is the nature, meaning, and scope of reflection in educational programs? Um, and so, and similarly, you can have other topics and you can have broader questions um, revolving around that particular topic. For example, you can say, what are the most um, useful teaching, teaching, um, teaching methodologies uh, for teaching particular um, concepts, such as for teaching grammar at the secondary school level or at the elementary school level. So that could be um, that is actually a very basic example of a research, broader research question. Your research question will then, your research questions and the initial identification of the research um, problem uh, will then lead you to a review of literature, which is actually exploring literature related to the particular issues or research questions that you are interested in in order to have insights into the various aspects of the topic under study. Um, analysis of the various views, the various models of the topic in a variety of fields and areas. Um, and so this, th this literature review will actually involve you exploring the topic um, with reference to foundational um, uh, sources of literature related to your topic, and then moving on to the very, very current sources. Um, generally, most research topics and most research issues have a historical background, and literature review helps you in having, um, uh, having, re having reference to those um, historical backgrounds of the particular research topic. So here is again a simple example of that. Um, in, in the case of my own research topic, the example is a variety of definitions and connotations of the term reflection in teacher education. So my research actually, my, my literature review told me that uh, reflect, reflection in teacher education has been defined in, uh, in multiple ways, and so there are various connotations. And similarly, a multitude of factors impacting its connotation and implementation. Um, a variety of factors have also been, were also associated with this particular concept in the context uh, of, uh, in educational context. And so this literature review actually helps you um, 
in understanding the background of uh, the, the, the topic that you are exploring and giving you in-depth understanding, it also helps you in identifying gaps or, it, uh, or um, in terms of helping you to how, what, what aspects are still there to be explored further and in what uh, other ways um, the, the particular concept that you are exploring has already been uh, explored. And so literature review then is the next step. What happens is research questions aim specification. This literature review or the background knowledge or analysis of the background knowledge actually helps you in having a more nuanced, specialized understanding of the topic. And now you have a more technical and a more expert knowledge related to the, the particular topic that you are exploring. This might lead to the reformulation or refinement of research questions. Um, and so you might go from more general to more specific uh, research questions and research objectives. And that will, that, that will actually mean that this will help you in the further delimitation and specification of the research topic that you want to explore. Again, here is an example. And the example is that what are the perceptions of university teachers regarding the connotation and implementation of reflection as a teacher education concept. Now, because I was exploring reflection um, in the teacher education context. <clears throat> so this was a more specific question and my research, my uh, actually the literature review helped me that I need to focus uh, my research topic on um, in these two areas, which is actually the connotation or the meaning of reflection and how it is implemented. And I had to actually specify it to teacher education. So exploring this as a teacher education concept rather than a concept in general education. And similarly, another uh, example of specification or, or in other words, uh, 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 limit, limiting your research question is what factors impact the connotation and implementation of reflection in teacher education programs. So again, this is an example of how you actually refine and specify and delimit the research questions. This is followed then by, so now you know what you are actually exploring. Now the question comes of how you will explore. And that actually leads to the formulation of the research design and then the implementation of that particular research design. So reflecting on the possibility of a research design choice. This will, uh, this, this, this will actually depend on the nature of the research problem. So the type of research problem that you are exploring will play its role in the formulation of the research and the selection of the particular research design. Besides the nature or the nature of the problem that you are exploring or the research question that you are exploring, there are other practical realities such as the time that is available to you, the resources that are, that are available to you, the skills that you have um, that are actually needed in um, the data collection and analysis processes. And similarly, the, the way previous studies have been conducted, all of these are important considerations while you are uh, deciding about the research design. Similarly, what type of research design is, is fit for the purpose of your study? So the types and nature of data and data source, sources will also play their role. Um, and so um, uh, choosing, let's say like in social sciences, we use qualitative researches and quantitative researches and mixed method re researches. Um, the choice of a research design will actually 
be dependent on all of these considerations. That is actually your research topic, the nature of your research topic, then practical realities such as time, resources, skill, and previous work that has been done, and the fitness of your particular research design for the purpose that you want to use it for, and then the types of the data and data sources and the nature. Um, the research design then once you decide on the research design, the next step is actually the implementation of the research design. So this is the practical implementation and that actually means that now you want to implement the research design, you want to conduct the study practically and here <clears throat> some of the important considerations that you need to think about is the selection of a site where you want to conduct uh, the, uh, the, the study. Similarly, the sample selection. Um, what are the people or what are the sources from which you want to collect your data? Then how you get access to sources of data or to the sample? Then actually what data collection processes, what data collection techniques will you use? Um, and also <clears throat> issues related to validity and reliability are some of the things that you will need to think about uh, while you are at the implement implementation stage of the study or while you are now practically conducting your research study. So this is also something that is the research design formulation and implementation is one of the most important steps in the general process of research in social sciences. Then we move on to once the research has, uh, design has been implemented and the data has been collected. What happens is that the next step basically is the data analysis uh, stage. Generally, the, uh, the data analysis um, depends on the nature of research and that actually means that um, different research designs might have different ways of dealing with the data analysis process or the stages at which data is um, actually analyzed. For example, generally in qualitative researches, data analysis is not something that happens after the com total collection of data. Um, on the other hand, data collection in qualitative researches is an ongoing process. It is a reiterative process and it's inductive process. And so you collect data um, and while you are collecting data, you also start the process of uh, initial analysis of the data. And so you have some initial findings and that might lead to the collection of further data. And so this process goes on. So there is this, this is a more continuous type of or continual process of data collection and analysis. And generally data analysis is because the data is in textual uh, form. Um, so a thematic analysis is something uh, that is used as a data analysis process in qualitative studies. In quantitative studies, uh, on the other hand, we have more structured designs and um, so they are more logically organized and as a result it happens that most of the data or all of the data is generally collected and so after the data collection process the data analysis process takes place and generally in quantitative research statistical analysis processes um, are, or mathematical calcula calculations are actually used. Then we have the, uh, we might have a mixed method research design where a combination of quantitative and qualitative data analysis uh, processes are used. And it will again, there will be, there, there is a bit of complexity over here because there are different types of sequential ordering in, um, in mixed method researches. So in some researches, quantitative research takes place and then it is followed by qualitative um, data collection and analysis processes. In others, 
um, it could go simultaneously and in some the opposite can happen. And so in mixed method research designs, the analysis process processes will involve both thematic analysis of the qualitative data and statistical analysis of the quantitative data. So that's um, this one, the analysis or uh, pro, uh, the analysis stage of the data is followed by the findings, conclusions and recommendation stage. And so what happens at this particular stage is that generally research studies are aimed at getting to some conclusions based on findings. Why, why do we conduct research? We conduct research in order to find answers to our research questions or in order to achieve our objectives or goals of the research studies. And so findings are basically um, the th findings are basically in, in response to our research objectives and research questions. Then conclusions uh, are actually based on our findings. So as researchers we conclude from our findings keeping in view um, the whole data and also previous studies. And so on the basis of those we conclude and these conclusions then subsequently lead to recommendations and suggestions for further studies. Um, and so findings and conclu conclusions are often uh, with reference to research objectives and research questions. So remember that in most cases um, our findings should be in the light of our research questions and objectives because those are the things around which the whole research process actually revolve. And again, our conclusions and also our recommendations should not be, should, should, should be actually critically analyzed. And that actually means that we should not just accept the findings from our studies, but we should put in our critical thinking into it and also the findings and insights from other studies um, and, that, uh, and that actually means critical analysis of the findings of our research is something that is very, very important. So this is then, um, this uh, uh, part then leads to an overall um, conclusion of the study and ultimately to a report that report is either a research paper in the form of a research paper or that report is in the form of a research thesis or any other research um, report that, that, that actually is the ultimate uh, thing that we get at the end of <clears throat> a general research process. So this was a brief summary and a very simplified summary of the general research process. Um, and the aim of this particular presentation was um, um, to uh, clarify some of the, the general research processes involved for research students and junior researchers or beginning researchers. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye.